the issue of the Jal, the reciting of Surah Kahf, was a thing that grabbed the attention of the people of the first era, Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and they spoke about different ahadiths. You would see the attention, how it was grabbed whenever they discussed the issue of the Jal. They continued looking out, out for him, worrying about him, narrating the ahadith. There was a time when they would say, teach your children the ahadith of the Jal. Teach your children the ahadith of the Jal. It would be discussed in very unique manners, in great detail. The amount of description of the Jal that has come in the ahadith, no nation has ever discussed it in the manner that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi discussed it. And he would mention that if you're going to really see this fitna, you're going to see it in my ummah. And in previous nations saw parts of it. It was operational in many times. Then there was a time when the jal was chained. After being chained also, his evil never stopped. But being chained in the time of most likely Suleiman alayhi salam, he continued. He was a master of disguise, master of deception. And he always was able to create a group around him that did a lot of things. But if anyone really saw the evil of the Jal, Nabi Sallallahu said, In my ummah you will see it. From the beginning a fitna of the Jal continued and especially it really showed itself with the fall of the Khilafah. In which manner he was behind it, we will not know how he operates, what lobbies he creates. They give names to these lobbies, Jewish lobby and Illuminati and Freemasonry. So the world would never really see him. But the effects of his evil, we really saw it in the world. The creation of the state of Israel, the fall of the Khilafah. Everywhere you would see the one eye coming on the American dollar, coming on military outfits. In a unique manner he established. And as the time goes now, and we're reaching the end, a day will come where he'll show himself. But when he's going to show himself, again you must understand the word Dajjal. Dajjal means master of disguise, master of deception. So even when he'll show himself, don't think you're going to pick up this is Dajjal. If you could pick it up, you don't call him Dajjal. He will show himself as such a unique person that Muslims, forget non-Muslims, Muslims around the world will be in love with him also. They will find him to be the solution to the problems of the world. He will not be evil outwardly. He will not be calling for war outwardly. Behind the scenes, he'll be doing everything, already doing it. But he will be such a person that if people have to be told, vote for one leader of the whole world, when non-Muslims will vote, Muslims will also vote for One leader. How far we are from that time, we don't know. But you can see how quickly we are going towards now the world becoming like two groups. There's no more many countries. You will have BRICS, they will be like half the world. And you will have what is called maybe the United States with a few countries half. And then when you have two, after two you go to one. After one you have to have one to be the head of one. The day you will hear about one, one government for the world, already it's going towards two. One currency for the world. And you have to have one leader over that one lobby. The day you hear of one leader, you must remember this lecture. That who will be able to take power over the entire world? One man. He will look so good that Muslims, non-Muslims will vote in him. On that day you must say, could this be the Jan? Could this be? Then he will have his periods where everything will be looking good. It comes in the narrations that people will warn, I think this is the Jal. And others will say, no way. Not. How many at that time will form? Surah Kahf, the unique thing of the Surah is what? It's able to protect a person from a trap you can't see. So the example we normally give is when you're driving very fast on the road and that one truck that truck decides just at that moment to come in your lane. He causes you immediately to put brakes. From 130 now you drop to 60. Naturally you want to sway him like, hey, couldn't you wait for me to pass? <coughs> then the hill is there, you behind him, behind him, you irritated, irritated, then slowly he moves. And then you just put on speed. As you put on speed, you see that police officer sitting. 
That's when you make dua for his hidayah. Allah reward him. Allah give him hidayah. He saved you. That's saving from a ticket. Sometimes you just say, he saved me from an accident. Then you make more dua for him. The whole family would have gone. When you can't pick up the check and something just comes in your way and saves you, that's called like a gift from the heavens. Surah Kaaf is that. That if I had to tell you how the trap will look, it's called Dajjal. Dajjal means it's deception. Deception is I won't pick it up, you won't pick it up. That's what a trap is. A man of deception is a man. They mention an incident in the books. It got nothing to do with this, but they mention the joker comes to the king, to the khalif. He's a joker, so the khalif says to him that for your jokes I'll pay you a certain amount. But if you can ever deceive me, because I'm a king, a king has to have a mind of a king. If I can be deceived by a person, it means you really something. If you can ever deceive me, then I'll give you much more than what I'm giving you for your jokes. So he says, it's on the deen. And he disappears. Now the king knows in his mind, one day that man is going to try to deceive me, I have to be on the lookout. Thus Khalif's habit is as he would move through his areas, he would always ask regarding pious people in the area. He would visit, they would have a small khanka, a small room. He would look at the madrasa, he would say, lovely madrasa, lovely khanka. And before going, he would say, yes, something from the king. A gift, and the gift of a king is nothing small. Put up your thing, do some renovations. I'm the king. So as he's moving through, he gets the news of a certain person. He just came recently in this area. He put up, he got a small one room. The king says, we will visit this person. He comes there, he finds an extremely pious person. He just moved in the area, there's hardly much people around him. And this person is devoted to Allah's deen, the people are talking about him. He looks there, he looks at the place, he says, this place needs a lot of work. So he takes out a good sum of money and as he's leaving, he says, make dua, the person lifts his hands. Dua for you, definitely. Then he wants to leave some money. So this person looks at the king and he says, you want to buy me off with your wealth? And he takes that whole thing and he throws it back to the king. He says, I am independent of your wealth, get out. So the king says, no, not for you, for the madrasa. He says, get out. This is the dog of the world, get out, get out. And as the king, like, for the king to be told, get out, get out. So he picks up the bag and in disgrace now, he puts it in someone's hand and he goes. A while later, this man comes, a joker. He comes to the king. king said, I haven't seen you for very well. He said, I came for my prize. He said, what prize? He says, I deceived you. He said, where you deceived me? He says, you remember this day? Remember the man who told you, get out, get out, get out? It was only me and you then. How I know about it? It was me. The king looks at him and he said, can never be you. He says, how do you think I know about what I told you on that day? I saw you. Nobody else knows. I saw how you were shivering in front of me. It was me. Now the king is looking, it can't be, can't be. The ending, the king says, okay, you know what? Maybe it was you, but I just can't be. How it was you? Then the king starts taking out the prize money. Then the king says to him, but what amazes me is that amount of gold I gave to that man if it was you, that's like 10 times more than the amount. So you could have just taken that gold and carried on your life. You threw that gold and now you're coming for 10 times less. So the man says, I can be a joker, but I'll never be ready to spoil the reputation of the pious man. So if I had to take that gold in the guise of the pious, I'll be spoiling their reputation. The pious took gold of the king. So then I can't do it. He said, I'm a joker. So the king said, amazing joker you are. So that's something out of the issue, but I want to tell you what's called, can I deceive you? Even if your mind is looking for the joker, when he will come in front, he will do it so well that you'll be ready to give him money also. This is the child. This is the child. It's not what we thinking about. Evil. It's taking out fire from his mouth. We'll be ready to put money in his system. He will look so well. So Rakaf. How far we are, we don't know. But normally they say when you have a match, first you have the beginning groups. All small groups, everyone from the different countries take part. They just get knocked out, nobody bothers, just to make money. Already from the beginning, you know, these ones are like nothing. Then you come to what they call quarterfinals. Now you say the match is now. Then you come to semifinals. When you come to finals, 
You must understand evil will be on its height. And good also will have to be on its height. That's why Nabi Sallallahu said at the end of time, there will be two camps. One camp will be a camp of Iman without any hypocrisy. Nabi Sallallahu said the end of my Ummah and the beginning of my Ummah, both of them will be so unique that you won't be able to pick up like which is the best. Obviously the first was the best. But that ending will be people who will have no desire for life like the first one. Khalid radiallahu anh, wrote to the king, I have people with me, how we desire to live. He said, they desire to die. We read this in the books. We would think we'll never see some people like that. Go in Gaza today. And you will see a people who desire death like how we desire life. Allah is making that army to be in the finals. The evil will be on its height, that army will be on its height. How far or how close we are, understand when that army is being made, it means the battle is not far away. In the next few years, as you hear the move towards Vision 2030, when you will hear the move towards one government called BRICS, one cryptocurrency, one currency for the world, you will see whether America will be with it or against it. Nefretin, a lot of Muslims in the world will all support BRICS. Why we won't support it? All Muslim countries will join in it because we want to get away from the evil America. But as we're doing that, they have this in mind. That the Jal is so unique that he can also be as he created the United Nations. And they read this thing for so long. But before the United Nations, there was Russia. Russia was against Muslims. There was the world wars that took place. Muslims died in the world wars. On the creation of the United Nations, Muslims were happy. They really felt now we got something that will look after Muslims. Where the United Nations ever looked after Muslims? After so many years now, we realized United Nations was a lie from the beginning. Now we found an alternative, BRICS. Maybe BRICS will help the Muslims. That same one who created United Nations will create BRICS. It's the move towards the government. You might then have two, it might go to one. As a Muslim, we will be on the lookout. We'll always move what we have to move, but you can't oppose it. But always be on the lookout. Don't fall so fast in the trap. Surah Kahf. Read Surah Kahf on a Friday. If you can't read the whole Surah, read part of it. We're not very far from the end. Not very far. But as I told you, if you think when he comes, I'll pick him up, you're not going to pick him up. We must not fall into kufr just at the end. Have you ever seen when a person loses in the semi-final, how they cry? But the one who lost at the beginning doesn't cry so much. Have you saw when the one loses in the final, how they cry? If Allah gives us the chance to reach the final, we come right to the ending and we fall there. We fall there. Really we will cry. We made it right till the end with Iman. And in the semi-final or in the final match we collapsed. Surah Kahf. We are so close to the ending. We must win this. But obviously the semi-final and final is not going to be a small match. A person who wins the final, what happens after that? Don't they congratulate? Isa alayhi salam, Nabi also mentioned he will congratulate people. He will say, Mubarak to you on the patience that you showed in the world. When a Nabi will be congratulating, it means what sabr those people. Already the people of Gaza got the congratulations of the whole world. One year and they have stood out and they are ready to stand out for a couple of years. I mean, if you say no one's helping in the world, no one ever helped them, no one's helping them now. One Quran is with them and they still carry on, still carry on. Army is being created. Surah Kahf. I will give you a few examples of Surah Kahf which could help us in looking at things in the world at the moment and it will help us as we go. In Surah Kahf, one of the unique points of the Surah is Nabi Musa alayhi salam and Khidr. Musa alayhi salam meets Khidr. He says, you are a servant of Allah which I heard about. You got unique knowledge but I don't understand this. What is this knowledge you're speaking about? Can I spend time with you? First thing Khidr says, you won't manage. You won't manage, it means that what I will do is according to the command of Allah. 
It is so deep in wisdom that even a Nabi will not understand the wisdom in the plans of Almighty Allah. In that he's trying to say, me and you, what we see in the world, we are never going to be able to understand why. So don't even ask why. Khidr is an individual, according to many, he's still alive. According to some, he passed away. That difference of opinion will continue, but what he did in that time was to show what the system of Allah is. With Musa alayhi salam, they board on a boat. It's not a very smart boat. It belongs to poor people. You can understand that boat hardly got anything in it. They don't charge khidr. They understand you are pious man. Musa alayhi salam gets on with him. They move him. As they move him on the journey, khidr is going to do one. He's going to break the boat. He's going to mend the boat. There's going to be no sound. I want you to think of this, you got a boat moving in water. While the boat is moving, you have a man who's trying to make a hole in the boat. How much of sound will it need? How much of banging? As soon as you bang and you take out a plank, you're going to get water coming through. People are going to scream, what's happening? Now think of Khidr. Khidr sits, he's able to make a hole in the boat. He's able to prevent water coming in the boat. There is no sound at all. It's only Musa salam looking at him. For example, he's sitting like this here with his finger, he just does this, and suddenly a hole is raised. And he does this here, and suddenly it's sealed up, that you can see the water wants to come through, but it can't come through. No sound. The most unique sealant in one second. No one knows about it, the boat is small. Musa salam says, what? He says, let's go. When the boat will dock, these person, boys will come around, they look at this, say, what happened here? They'll see water. They say, how do we go in the waters with this? What if the water comes through? And they'll carry on trying to mend this. But what a unique finger of Khidr. In which era this happened when technology did not know how to make a cut without sound? One Khidr finger was showing that the technology of Allah no matter where they reach, ask them if today they have reached that level. <coughs> Go in a boat, in a few seconds make a cut in the boat. In that same time seal it up. Water wants to come through, water not allowed to come through. You must be able to break and mend it at the same time. Technology still hasn't reached. Allah Tawarukullah's technology at that time was, my one servant will just do it. To show that no matter where this the Jali system of technology will reach, Allah's is far beyond. Far beyond. So if the match is between them and Allah, they are nowhere. nowhere. Allah. One servant. Musa salam will say, What did you do? Khidr will say, Allah. He said, if only you knew after a while a king of this area was going to send his soldiers. Their job was to take away every boat that could go on the waters easily. Why? Because he was going to go fight with a neighboring king. They were going to pass by these people. They were going to see the boat. They would look at these boys. They would look at the boat. They would see a hole in the boat. They would say, where are we going to break head with this boat? Immediately they will confiscate other boats. These, this group will afterwards learn that hey, this hole is not harming the boat. With the hole they will go onto the waters. People will start getting them to take them in the waters because there's no other boats. They will be able to charge a higher amount. Suddenly they'll make so much of money in a short space of time. They'll be able to buy better boats. The entire future is written on one second of the servant of Allah. One second. Around the two miskin or masakin orphans, there was an entire system working. To make sure they don't go anywhere in life. There were all the other boats. There was the king taking away boats. One command of Allah. One break. That break would make all of us say, why? And he would say, in the break is the make. In the break is the make. This is just one example. Musa alayhi salam would ask why the future of the young boys were written in breaking it in what a manner. But in one second, what's happening in the world at the moment, do you really think Allah's command is not behind it? But naturally me and you will say, but why? 
And in that why, if Khidr has to say, remember my one movement of my finger, may the Nabi also say why. But the future of those boys were written in this why. The future of Islam is written at the moment in what's happening in the world. And no matter where they reach, they far from the power of Allah. Far from the power of Allah. They pass by a young boy. Khidr is ordered by Almighty Allah, this boy must pass away. Allah is the one in charge. But how he makes him pass away? The young boy runs in a bush. He's playing with his friends a game, maybe ball. Khidr will just put his finger on the boy, the boy will go unconscious. He will feel no pain. There will be an operation. Khidr will just move his one finger around the boy's neck and the neck will come out. There will be no blood gushing, there will be no scream, there will be no pain. What an operation. At what time, do you know when Musa a.s. was? At that time, technology way it reached today. What operations? And Khidr at that time was to say, but you will never reach the operation of Allah. That boy just falls down. The head is put there. And Musa a.s. and Khidr, they move away. No one notices anything. Musa a.s. will say, what did you do? Khidr will say, that Allah wanted in this family Hidayah. But for that Hidayah, blood was needed, tears were needed. If you wanted this boy to love, Allah could have let him love. But this boy one day would have caused trouble to his parents. Allah wanted tears, Allah wanted blood. With that blood and tears, Allah is going to give them a child very soon. When the next child comes, you forget the pain of the first one. But in that next child, Hidayah for this entire locality has been written guidance. He said, you looking at one blood, we looking in front. At the moment in Gaza, do you think the blood of the Mujahids of Gaza will ever go in vain? That mother and father cried for their one child. Khidr said, Allah wrote on their tears, Hidayah for the locality. But the blood and the tears of the Ummah at the moment, Hidayah for the world is being written. And we're going to see it. At that time, no one will ask them, why? Now we'll only really ask, why? What's happening? But nothing is far from the decision, the power of Allah. Allah is beyond everyone. But we are moving now right to that time, right to that time. The final of Khidr alayhi salam in Musa, the wall is falling. The people don't want to see them. Khidr puts his hand on a falling wall. Think about you building walls, always building. When someone says, we need this wall to be repaired, how you repair it? You have to break at the foundation. You can't just tell the builder, put your hand there and the wall will go up. Khidr will just walk past, he's put his hand there and the whole wall comes up. Musa a.s. gets angry. He's supposed to ask him, how you did that? But he gets angry. He said, they couldn't feed us, you're building the wall. Because Musa a.s. he slapped the wall. He drop it faster. Sometimes we're looking at America. We want America to collapse. Collapse now, collapse. And then we see they're getting more strong. And it gets us more irritated. Khidr would explain to Musa a.s. Under that wall was a treasure. The treasure belonged to certain people. If the wall falls now, those people would not be able to get the treasure. When the time is right, Allah will let the wall collapse. On the collapsing of the wall, the treasure will reach the right people. You're looking at a wall, Allah is looking for the future of people. Sometimes we'll ask, why? Why the wall never fall? Why the empire never fall? Hold on, we're leaving it for a while. Why that boat got a hole? Hold on, that boat needed the hole. Why the boy had to pass away? The boy had to pass away. In the decisions of Allah, we'll always ask why, like Musa a.s. And always later on, time will show us, you shouldn't have asked why. Allah's system is complete. And we are seeing that system. That if fast, we're moving towards the day. Start reciting Surah Kaf, even if you don't know the meaning. Put trust in the decision, the divine power of Almighty Allah. And be proud of our Islam. That Allah's one-one decision collapses empires of kufr. And Islam is never defeated till the end. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyil kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillah.